guys, my name is Lacey of Spiegelos and Fat Hips, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Consider this my Valentine's Day look. I think this video is going up either right before Valentine's Day or on Valentine's Day, either one. Tops of my eyes are the new Natasha Denona Love Palette. I really like this. Bottom, lower lash line, and inner corner are the Alma Palette from Amy Hearts Beauty X Amy Loves Makeup. And then on my cheeks, the Fairy Blush Palette. I, I like this look, but this isn't a video about that. I will say though, consider yourself my valentine. Um, in your mind's eye, picture that I've given you one of those cute paper cartoon valentines that we all had to give out in elementary school, and mine has candy on it, because I'm that bitch that I'm giving you candy with your little valentine. You're welcome. Happy Valentine's Day. We once again have to talk about Anastasia, Beverly Hills, ABH, Norvina, all of their foolishness because oh how the mighty have fallen. Like I personally, I should say as, a, as an asterisk to this video, as a preface, I don't have a horse in this race. I'm not here to like cancel ABH. I'm not here to talk about, well I am here to talk about what they're doing wrong, but I'm not here to persuade you whether you should or shouldn't support them. That's not what this is about. I just find them to be a very interesting case study of how a brand can go from being so loved and so respected to so criticized, so deeply rooted in controversy at any given moment and just so like night and day difference all within like a year I would say. I know I'm not the only person who's noticed this, I know I'm not the only person who's talked about this, but I find it interesting especially because I really do like Anastasia Beverly Hills. One of my favorite palettes of 2019, spoiler alert for a video that's hopefully coming soon, was the Jackie Ina palette. I loved that palette and I've traditionally always held them in very high regard, but everything they've been doing lately, and I'm not even going to talk about like the MLM stuff because I already did a podcast episode about that. I will link it down below. This is my reminder to editing Lacey to put that link to that podcast down below. We need to talk about the PR search because I've talked about it already. I actually, I don't even know how long ago I did a video called, I think, like, what's really wrong in the beauty community or where the toxic, something about why I thought the beauty community was currently toxic at that time. I'll put in the cards. Maybe I'll link that one down below too. And I talked about their constant releases and I, I no wait, did I? It's so hard to keep track. Do you see what my problem is? I actually think in that video I didn't talk about their constant releases. I talked about the PR search and how I thought that it was preying on small influencers, but now we need to revisit the subject because it's gotten worse, I think. Or, I don't know, I think it, or it's about to get even worse. So let me catch you up. Just a brief synopsis. Anastasia Beverly Hills was one of the first brands to really kick off the whole looking to add people onto our PR list hype marketing tactic. I'm referring to it as a marketing tactic, whether you want to believe it is or not. They were one of the first companies to start that kind of a thing and then Jeffree Star Cosmetics did it, a lot of indie brands did it. Basically going on social media saying we're looking to showcase smaller talent on add you guys to our PR list, tag us in looks, whatever. And it broke the internet and annoyed a lot of people because it got very cutthroat. I'm now, okay, so I should say I was not on Twitter at the time of the original PR search. I'm on Twitter now, so that's interesting. I know it was very annoying for people on Twitter at that time because if you're a makeup consumer, you partake in makeup Twitter, your feeds were just spammed with ABH looks and promo and begging to be on the PR list. I did see it on Instagram. I've always had my Instagram. And I, in my original video, called it like a genius marketing tactic because it's free promo. ABH's name was blasted everywhere and nobody even like had to, you know, like their marketing team didn't even have to spend money on it. It was just this possibly, you could possibly get on our PR list and people went bananas and spammed ABH everywhere, used their products, did looks, did free promo, and I'm sure that it boosted their sales. I don't have physical evidence to back that up, but I'm positive and it's genius without ever having to spend money on a traditional campaign. I think that's why so many other brands followed suit and quickly did afterwards. And I argued then and I argue now that it probably was never about actually showcasing smaller artists and I feel like now I have more evidence to back that up. The new controversy now, because that all happened, I guess people did truly end up on the list 
the list. That's become such like a buzzword, the list, the ABH list. Oh my god, don't, okay, we're gonna get into that. I guess the newest drama is that a lot of the people who were put on the list in that time had been unexpectedly taken off the list. And people are very upset about the way that ABH has handled the whole thing. I went and got my phone because I have some receipts. I don't like that term, but I have some tweets to back up what I'm about to say. So from what I believe happened, a bunch of people were getting kicked off unexpectedly and that started all this hype of people feeling like they had been manipulated into doing all this work for either nothing or very little or there was no communication at all on ABH's part. A lot of people were saying, I get that you have to remove me from the list, but at least you could have sent us emails. Why? Norvina went on her Twitter and said, currently after the many feelings that reveal themselves with the removals, I need some time before my excitement for a search comes back. If it's that easy to start doubting everything that we're about, given how consistent I feel that I am, we may need a different approach. I don't really know how I feel about Norvina's response because of course people are going to be upset that they're removed from the list because that was part of the problem in the first place was that we created this like air of exclusivity and almost like mean girls club about the list in the first place. So this is stuff that I'm just finding out now because I'm only now on Twitter. Apparently it got really cutthroat. Like some influencers were starting rumors about other influencers on various social media websites, on Reddit, things like that, so that they'd be taken off the list. All kinds of just like manipulative bullshit. And this is why if I'm titling the video what I think I'm titling it, I don't think... <laughs> so the PR list was a disaster and I don't think it's any one side's fault. I think there is a lot of blame to put on Anastasia Beverly Hills in this situation because I do think there wasn't a lot of transparency about the whole campaign to begin with. But I think it says a lot about small influencer culture and influencer culture in general and maybe what people's expectations were versus what they should have been in this situation. So again, like I referenced before, I really feel like you'd be hard pressed to ever convince me otherwise that this wasn't mostly a marketing stunt. Do I think that it was like this evil backhanded way for Norvina to be like, oh yeah, we love to showcase small influencers with not like no not actually meaning that? No, I do genuinely believe that Norvina probably did want to find new talent, so to speak, that could represent the brand and that the brand could elevate. I do think there was an element of that because I think as a whole everyone's gotten so sick of bigger influencers and this was right around the time of that like 60k a mention product review video thing. Like, remember when Mar Marlene of Makeup Geek dropped the whole 60k for a mention video, basically, that broke the beauty community? This was all around this time that ABH announced this search. I hope you guys are sticking with me. I know my words are getting jumbled. And that was my theory as to why so many brands were jumping on smaller influencers because you could get away paying them less, most likely, and they might be easier to control with smaller egos. So I do think there was an element of like, we're sick of big influencers, we want to work with small influencers, but also most likely also genuinely wanting to elevate people for the love of makeup and for the love of makeup artists. But as we've all kind of realized, just because maybe Norvina had those intentions doesn't mean there wasn't maybe a whole PR team behind this, a whole marketing team, a whole social media team, a whole research department. Like, it's a multi-million dollar company with a lot of investors. There were a lot of hands in this pot. ABH wouldn't have even started all of this without looking for some kind of return. I'm going to get into that in a second. I've said before, and I've said again, PR is a business transaction. Any company who sends you anything, and they're not paying you to talk about it, they're just sending you product, it's not out of the kindness of their heart, and I've said this time and time again on this channel, it is a business transaction in that that company is going to make up, or hoping to make up, the cost of that product through some kind of earning on your end. They're hoping to get a return on their investment. 
That is the only reason ever that anybody in this industry has ever gotten free stuff ever is a return on the investment. It could be that you're gonna drive your subscribers to go buy that product. It could be that you're just blasting their name all over social media. It could be clout, the word clout. Because on the other, on the flip side, that's what influencers were hoping to get out of this. Influencers were hoping to get the free stuff, obviously, and I would be dumb to think that there weren't small influencers and makeup artists that only wanted to be on the list because they genuinely just wanted the free stuff. But I'm sure most people also wanted the benefit that ABH could give to them by posting them on their social medias, putting their name out there, inviting them to events, getting them more well known, getting them more as like a household influencer type of name, sharing their artistry across social media platforms. So it, sh it should in theory be a reciprocal relationship. My theory as to why they suddenly have pulled so many people off of the list, and I think I have a tweet to back up this claim, is that there was not enough return on investment and that has everything to do with the fact that being a small influencer by definition means you only have a small amount of influence so if I had to guess overall however many people they added on the list I think I saw that they had 2,000 people on the list and so many releases ABH released how many palettes last year like eight palettes, I think, eight collections. There's no way you can convince me that they got their return on that investment, that all of the people they added to that list did their part of the kind of unspoken transaction that took place and earned back what ABH was investing in them. I would be hard pressed to think that that was the case. Norvina says, I did a check on the PR list removal. I know there are a lot of hurt feelings still. The total is 350 out of 2100. The team reminded me that last year prior to the searches, we removed 700 as we had not looked at that list closely in two years. We need to make room for new people. How do that many people deserve PR in the first place. I couldn't name that many small people if I tried, small influencers if I tried. Holy shit. I don't know what's normal for a PR list. I don't know what's average, but I saw somebody do the math on like just the big Norvina palettes, what that would cost to send to 2,100 people. That's ridiculous, but I guess in the same breath, companies spend more to do traditional ad campaigns, so it's not that far-fetched. Okay, so I did some quick math real quick to kind of back up my point here. So there were three big Norvina Pro palettes. They retail at $60. There's 2,100 people on the list so that is three hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars I did my math worth of product worth of PR that they sent out that is three hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars that could have gone to traditional marketing campaigns where they're on social medias maybe they're on TV maybe they're on YouTube ads in magazines whatever and I can probably guarantee you that the return on doing traditional marketing with that amount of money versus investing that money into influencers, I'm sure that there's no contest for that because what ABH could reach on their own is probably not even close to what small influencers could reach with their audiences. But again, just the theory. Also, I'm wearing a shirt that says Geology Rocks. This is my life. I think a lot of the problem is what I referenced earlier of the kind of reputation that the list had, what it meant for people in the industry, what it meant for small influencers, people using it as a status symbol, using it to look down on other people, people taking it to an extreme, people not wanting to even look at their social medias, having to block those words on Twitter, people getting a little cutthroat about it. The reason why I'm like so fired up about this and why I feel like influencers needed to manage their expectations on the situation is that like even now I was looking at my Twitter and I'm seeing people like thanking ABH for keeping them on the list in a very like thank you kind overlord kind of way and it feels gross to me because it really pushes home all of the like gross capitalist things that I speak against on this channel all the time but now I'm just ranting. A big pushback I've seen against ABH is people one being hurt and two feeling like there was no communication that at no point was anybody ever told how many things they would receive if when or if they'd be taken off the list what was expected of them. I will say that some of that is pretty fair. I think if it were me, I would definitely want to know what was expected of me when I was giving PR. I know the small fragments of PR that I personally, Spooky List Fat Hips, get in my life. I always make sure that the brand sending me anything knows that I can't guarantee shit. That I, may, I might talk about it, I might not. 
I'm not doing work without being paid, products not payment, like I can't guarantee anything. So did ABH not say what their relationship was going to be with these people when they were added onto the list? Did they not say, hey, we're going to expect looks with this, we're going to expect that you tag us so many times, we're going to expect for you to make videos. It seems like overall there was a lack of communication. I know Jen Loves Reviews Jen was saying on Twitter that she thought it would be appropriate if there was some like some kind of an application process where somebody could say what kind of content they create, how big their audience is, what they plan to do with the products, things of that nature. But also just unfortunately, ABH doesn't owe anybody an explanation and no brand owes anybody anything because like I said, no brand is doing anything out of the kindness of their heart. They're doing it as a business transaction. If you can't deliver, don't expect to stay on the list. It doesn't matter how skilled you are, unfortunately. It really comes down to how much are you reaching an audience and does that benefit ABH in any way, shape, or form? What's the theme? Wait, we say it all the time on this channel. What, what What's the theme again? Oh yeah, the brands aren't people. Brands don't have feelings. Brands don't care about you. They care about your money. It's almost like that's the root of this problem as well, is that even though Norvina is a person who is the face of the company and Norvina may or may not care about small creators to a certain extent, she's just part of a brand and the brand just wants money. So overall, I think we can kind of boil it down to that's what went wrong, is that one, ABH has been just doing a lot of weird shit lately and they've been doing a lot of stuff that's very transparently for the money more so than they ever have before because they have investors now and it seems like a lot of us have put two and two together that around the time that they got a lot of big investors is the time they started making really ridiculous decisions like dropping pallets all at once, doing these weird PR searches, partnering up with MLMs, etc, etc. And I think it's messed up to prey on people's emotions because People just want to make it in this industry. People just want to be makeup artists. People just want to be influencers. People want to showcase what they can do on social media. And it's so weird and it's such a crazy industry and it, there's a lot of luck behind it. And the whole thing's just, I don't know, It's people, people are vulnerable and there was a predatory aspect to it. I can't help but think that there was a predatory aspect to it. Do people need to manage their expectations at the same time? Not to quote Gabby Hanna ever. Oh my God, I heard those words coming out of my body and my whole essence was like, don't. I will rephrase that. Do people need to think more critically about what brands want from you when they ask to work with you? That's a huge part of this too. Unless it's like your friend's small indie brand that's just sending you their new product because they love you and they want you to have it, there's always gonna be an expectation. Always, some kind of business, profitable, cash baby expectation. Either way, I'm interested to see how it turns out because this is all happening on the heels of the MLM scandal. Like I said, I talked about that on the podcast in like a quick cousin commentary. It'll be linked. But that was such a cash grabby gross thing too. And I feel like a lot of people are just done with ABH. They're done with how shady they've been. They're done with how just, I don't, I don't know how to phrase it other than like, ABH used to feel classy and luxurious and now they feel very mainstream and money hungry and that's so obvious to so many people and I think a lot of people are over it and have stopped checking for them. I think the course of action that they're on now is hurting them and might not be sustainable in the long run because it's ruining their reputation. I don't know, that that part, oh, I mean this whole thing is my opinion, you're welcome to disagree. I just hope that we can all be polite about it. You don't need to go to bat for ABH. They don't know that you exist, they don't care, believe me. And if you wanna support them, I don't care. You do what you want. I'm still gonna support ABH until they do something like so crazy fucked up, I don't know. Because like I said, I like a lot of their products and I just, all brands are money hungry blah 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 things I always say. Let me know what you guys think about the PR search because the whole thing I hate. I hate I hate all of it. I hate how people react to it. I hate the thank you kind overlord please notice me bullshit. I hate that Norvina is acting like she's the victim in this situation and not the people who feel like they were manipulated into doing free work to get on a PR list that wasn't a long-term thing anyway apparently. I don't know. 
everyone seems to be a little bit at fault here. Let me know your thoughts. If you like this video, if you like these kind of let's look at what's happening in the beauty community right now videos, and if you like me, please hit like and subscribe. You can also follow me on my Instagram, which is also Spookless and Fat Hips, or my Twitter at Spooky Lacey. You can listen to me on the Half Cousins podcast at least one time a week, sometimes multiple times a week. All of that information will be linked down below. Other than that, that is all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys!